I don't know if I can talk about what I was going to talk about today. Talk about it. Given that, uh, given what happened yesterday. So I thought instead we would have a bit of a conversation about where our country is right now in the context of coastal and resource management. So to be clear, I don't particularly like to discuss such, such, such subjects with you guys. Um, not because I, I don't think you can't handle it, but because I think too many professors um, take advantage of you guys as a vulnerable population. And they, they, I think, too often talk about their personal political beliefs, and I have undue sway upon you. And so for those reasons, I don't like to talk about these subjects. I mean, we'll talk about the consequences of things and stuff, but this seems to be um, an unusual situation. And I think it would be good for us to have a conversation today about what's going on and what we think might be coming down the road. There are some very um, uh, potentially uh, altered landscapes coming down for those of us that are interested in things like climate change and stuff like that. And so I thought, um, since I was having a hard time <laughs> pulling together my lecture for today, I thought maybe we just have a conversation about what's going on. So having said that, love to hear, let's have a conversation, love to hear what you guys have to say. Everybody can say whatever they want, right? This is a, as always, you guys are welcome to voice whatever concerns or opinions you have. Um, no one is stupid or no one is, is freakazoid or whatever. But I do think it's important that we, we see where we are um, right now as our country. Does that sound cool? Yeah. Okay. This is where things stand as of uh, right now. This is where things stand as of right uh, now, this, this uh, midday. Um, here the day after the 2016 presidential election. Um, First thing, though, before we get too deep into it, is to say that, firstly, the patterns that we're seeing are, should all be completely familiar to you. So here's the presidential pattern, right? Coastal, primarily it's a coastal versus inland phenomenon, right? We talked about that. Again, when I was a kid growing up in San Francisco, another weird place, um, we, it was always Southern California. Southern California this, Southern California that, you know, Nor NorCal, SoCal, all that kind of jazz. That's, that's a crock. That doesn't exist other, in, other than in marketing and t-shirt campaigns. This is the real divide with California. And if you don't believe me, we can go down and look at all the propositions. It doesn't matter at this point what people voted, but check it out. There's an inland color and there's a coastal color, right? 53, 59, 57, 61. You pick and there is this clear difference between folks that live at or near the co in the coastal zone and folks that live away. And that is the best per, you know, gross predictor, knowing nothing else, just based on geography in terms of our state, and in terms of many of, the, many of the areas around the world. That's the, if you can only pick one quick geographic predictor, close, close to the ocean or, or far away from the ocean, right? So that's, um, again, not new to us, but this just confirms this phenomenon that we've been talking about and been seeing, right? Others, let's talk about some other phenomena. So um, proposition 67. So one thing that is, is disappointing, I would say, again, I'm not trying to take political sides here, but one thing I would say that is disappointing is an increasing phenomenon that is based upon confusion and disengagement and a clear strategy of some folks. One of the ways we saw that in our current, in our election yesterday was, for example, the plastic bag ban. Now, we've polled about the plastic bag ban. You guys have done a lot of talking to people about, among other things, plastic bag bans. In the case of yesterday, we had, uh, so Prop 67, so, so just to be clear, um, we already had a, a signed into statewide law, you know, let, let, let's get rid of plastic bag bans, and then, uh, plastic bags, excuse me, um, for routine purchases of, at, at large stores. Something like 40% of all the different municipalities across California, cities, counties, et cetera, have also separately passed their own restrictions on the usage of single-use plastic bags. And why is that? Well, that's because people like you guys, when we go out and do our beach surveys and all this and that, we find a ton of plastic bags out at the beach. And it's a very conspicuous thing. Are there other challenges? Are there other 
sources of plastic and we find plastic elsewhere? Totally. But this is one that's really conspicuous. And it would seem relatively easy to fix. With our work on microfibers, it's looking like the, the fleece jackets that we wear when we throw them in the washing machine, they shed a bunch of microplastics. We're going to ban fleece? That's a hard thing, right? Bla but banning plastic bags is a low, should be, in theory, a low bar if that's what you choose to do, right? You don't need a plastic bag. It's not going to keep you dry. You know, it, it, when it rains, that kind of stuff, right? So we could easily, in theory, change the behavior or substitute an alternative in its place. So that's one of the reasons why folks have targeted plastic bag bans. Conspicuous problem. We can see it. Anybody can see the issue. And don't necessarily need them. So that's why these bag bans have gone into effect. This election season, certain folks, 96% of the funding for our plastic bag, um, our plastic bag uh, uh, measures came from four out of state uh, plastic bag manufacturers. So those folks clearly saw a value in spending millions of dollars to convince you to behave a certain way. Clearly they think that it's in their uh, business's self-interest to have the laws in a certain way, right? In a democracy, folks can, can voice their uh, opinions in different ways. So what they did though, and very unusual, but what seems to maybe be starting to become the norm, one group put forward two different proposals, two different propositions that depends on which lawyer you talk to, but that counteract each other. That's strange. There might be an entity that puts on two propositions, but one is about this part of doing, of going north, and this other one is about another part of going north. This was one going north, one possibly going south. Very strange, very unusual. And so um, it turns out what happened was 67, which is the one here, which is the one that with 100 district, districts reporting as of this morning, 52% yes, that says keep the existing stuff in place, which is the existing statewide uh, uh, plastic bag going. So that essentially reaffirms what we were uh, already doing before all this. The other one, which is Prop 65, which is this one, which did not pass, uh, would have changed stuff and would have, uh, many groups were arguing, would have, would have greatly harmed the, um, the efforts to reduce plastic bags. So, so that seems to be a good thing, but have a look, right? 67, one, what's, this, what's the overall breakdown? 52% to 48%. Is that a wide margin of victory? How about 65 that was defeated? Similar there, slightly larger. What is it? It's uh, 55 to about 45. And we see that throughout everything yesterday, or, 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 or throughout the vast majority of things. Environmental proposals, uh, senatorial candidates, presidential candidates. It is really close. When I was looking at some of the ret returns last night from Pennsylvania, there were you know, millions of people voted. They were separated at least at one point by 4,000 votes. So I think what this says is this country is very divided. We don't seem to want to talk to each other. And unfortunately, we increasingly seem to be drawing our facts and our worldviews from completely different places. So for all the problems that we had back in the day with newspapers and, and uh, you know, newspaper magnates and this and that, deciding what stories go in and this and that, um, same thing with radio, with everybody having the same radio, we have to listen to the Beatles again, you know, all that stuff. At least there was some common language, right? There was some common experience, some common touch points. Increasingly, with our incredibly powerful internet, and there's so many ways we can seek information and seek seek stories and stuff. What appears to be the, more the norm is that you guys and everybody, we're all going to the places that we like, the people that talk like we talk, the people that look like we look, the people that say things that we like to hear. And that can be totally comforting, right? You don't like to go places where people are always telling you you suck or you're stupid or you're, you're lame or whatever. So of course it's a natural thing. But one of the, I think, clear lessons from this is for the future of our democracy, it's going to be important that 
you actually go outside of your comfort zone and talk to talk to folks that maybe aren't aren't exactly like you or don't exactly think like you. When we moved down here from San Francisco, we moved down here to uh, get our program going, get this campus going. Totally lucked out. We ended up on a street um, in an area that's fairly wealthy, but that there's firefighters on my street, and there's some policemen, and there's a guy that started his own business, and there's a guy from Iran, and there's a guy, it's, so, so there's folks from a, a, a wide, a much wider group of our fellow citizens than you would otherwise expect. And when you go to the other streets to the right and left of us, it's much more uh, homogeneous, I'll just say it that way. And I like that about my street. So I like the fact that my neighbors would always call me like Kami, Freakazoid, Weirdo, Enviro. <laughs> they didn't, they, they said it with a smile, right? They weren't trying to stab me in the back. But they clearly have maybe some different views perhaps on Proposition 67 or whatever. And I like that. That's okay. And I would encourage you guys, I think some of you guys in conversations I've had with you earlier today, some of you guys are feeling uh, perhaps depressed. I want to hear what you, what you guys are thinking about now, what your guys take on what's been happening is. But um, there's a couple ways you can react to this. You can say, life sucks, and this is baloney, and blah, 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 and I don't like what happened. And you can turn back to those places that you were getting your information from, your sources from, and you can say, uh, yeah, whatever, those, those other folks suck. Or you could try to extend a hand and you can say, huh, maybe there's something I'm not getting. Maybe these folks have some real concerns. Maybe I should chat with these folks, right? Maybe I should chat with these folks. So we moved to our, I told, I told you guys some the story a couple of times or some of you in certain ca cases, but so moved to my street. I have a Prius, if you guys don't know, right? Because I'm a weirdo, right? I'm a weirdo. And, um, one of my neighbors, who unfortunately is, has since passed away, um, uh, very uh, great guy, classically, I think you guys would call this person a classic conservative person and certain political beliefs and this and that, and always would give me, would always razz me about stuff. Oh, is that that oil spill? You know, all that kind of stuff. And one day, I'm driving up the street in the middle of summer, and he, he had a big, he had a big, you know, massive SUV. And he's a single guy, older single guy. So he didn't have a big family with a bunch of soccer kids and that kind of stuff. So I'm driving up, and he says, "Hey, John." I'm like, yeah. And he lean, and I roll down the window, and he leans in, and he he looks at the my car, and he says, "So, uh, so how many, uh, how many miles per gallon does this thing get?" And I wanted to say, "Oh yeah, you care about how many miles per gallon I get?" And he clearly wasn't breaking into a snarky comment or something like that. And he said, yeah, so, so how, many, how many miles per gallon do you get? And I literally bit my tongue. I bit my tongue so I wouldn't say something or giggle or whatever. And I said, oh, I get about, uh, I get consistently about 45, 46 miles per gallon. But when I was in the Bay Area where it was flatter, I, we have to drive up these hills here, I would pretty, more, much, pretty easily get 50, 52 miles per gallon. And he said, really? I said, yeah. And then he proceeds to start to ask me questions. What I wanted to say was, or, or, or what my, my tendency was, you expletive deleted. Yeah, like you really care about this, right? All that stuff for all the years you've been razzing me and telling me how, what an idiot I was to buy this small car and da 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 da. But that's not the right way to go forward, right? The right way to go forward is bite your tongue and say, what's up, Tom? Totally, dude. Hey, you want to take it for a drive, dude? You can, tell, you can take it drive today, tomorrow, whenever, right? And that's about going forward. And that's about being collegial with, with people. And that's about making friends as opposed to enemies. Mm -hmm. And it's too easy, I think, to watch certain TV channels, to read certain news sources, and think those other people are just idiots, right? Those people are just totally stupid. I hope to God you guys pull it off, because the numbers, they just, these polls don't know what they're talking about. He has gotten people to come out to vote and register to vote. And I've seen the small crowds that Hillary Clinton has had, and that makes me question why even this race is that close. So that was a little snippet from the news last night. So 
one lady was saying, these polls are totally wrong. They didn't talk to us. And look, we were right, right? All those polls going to this election saying things would go a certain way, and it didn't turn that way. The second uh, lady here said, oh, this is all a lie. All these people here, it was all, all a lie. That suggests that we are looking at things with different facts, right? Using different pieces of information and completely different pieces of information potentially. This was a, a TV uh, broadcast from a bar in Long Beach last night. Um, there, was, there were only uh, uh, supporters of President-elect Trump at that bar, or at least that's what it appeared to be from the comments and stuff. So it was all these kind of things, right? We like to go to places where there's people that think like us and talk like us. It's much harder to go to places where people don't think, don't talk like us. So when, when, um, when I went up to Stanford and I started talking to people, I, I, I started telling my colleagues, hey, I want to go talk to the um, Kiwanis Club, and I want to go talk to the you know, uh, Club for Growth people, and the folks that maybe you don't think of as having strong environmental concerns or priorities. And some of my colleagues up there, in fact, my postdoc advisor, what the hell do you want to do that for? You know, like, probably you'll be, be much better received by the Sierra Club and the blah, 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 blah. I don't want to talk to the Sierra Club. The Sierra Club and I probably agree on many things. I want to go talk to the folks that have a different opinion of mine. Because maybe I'm going to learn something. Maybe I'm incorrect. Maybe my phrasing of this problem is wrong, right? So Sarah just, you know, just recently talked to us there about whales. She's talking to us about whales. Are you guys economics majors? No. She'd probably get a different response if she gave that talk in an economics class, right? They'd probably say, why are you using average valuation? That's stupid. Why don't you use the range or something like that, right? And that would make her talk, that would make her understanding of the subject that much better. But that's hard, right? Because we have to go somewhere a lot of times we're by ourselves or we're the, we're the rarity, we're the minority. But that's what we really, I, see, I think that's what we need to go forward. We need to be talking to folks. And when somebody from a different perspective, I don't know, maybe with a hat that says make America great again, walks up to you, Maybe you should extend your hand and say, "Hey, man, let's chat about some stuff. Want to get want to get a want to get a coffee or whatever? Let's let's hear what's going on." That's the way I think we're going to get out of this huge pit that we've entered, that we've been entering for many years in terms of our country, about 50, divided 50-50, divided 50-50, and literally somebody farted, and one person won. It could have easily gone the other way, and we would still be in this exact position of of a divided nation. And so that has all kinds of consequences for our coastal marine management, but all kinds of other things too. So I've been, I've been jabbering on here. I want to hear from you guys. So what, what, are, you guys, what are you guys thinking about, uh, about the goings on of the last 24 hours? I 100% agree with you. I think that people really easily lose sight of the fact that we're all humans and we all have opinions and perspectives and ways to view things. And I don't necessarily think that the candidate that we ended up with really understands that himself. But um, I do think that that's something that people should not lose sight of. And I think it's really, really important moving forward, like you said, because the state that we've kind of been in is like more important than ever, you know, to develop an understanding for people that have different views than you do. Totally. It's hard to want to sit down and talk to people who support a guy that the former head of the KKK supports, and it's hard to yeah. want to sit down and say, let's have a coffee and talk about why you think this guy's good. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you look at the, that map up there, it shows a lot of the predominantly wider majority populations, the southern area, a lot of lower education levels and that. Yeah, I mean, switching counties is even more depressing. I mean. You see that like a lot of the education levels, especially along the like the Bible Belt area, kind of the southern area, it's, mm -hmm. it's always red. But I think voter turnouts were much higher for people who don't regularly vote. And 
I, it's still harder to try to sit down and want to have a coffee with any of these types of people. I hear you. When a, when a, when a, dis, a natural disaster happens, um, absolutely, in fact, I've been thinking about writing a paper on this, absolutely, the default is everybody, um, you know, 95% of the time says things are going to be worse than they actually are. Yeah. With New Orleans, we ordered 10,000 body bags for what ends up being um, a lot of people dead, but you know, a thousand-ish people dead, not tens of thousands. Same thing, we see this over and over again that we, we um, initially it's because we don't know. This, this, is, this is a surprising result to I think everyone, or, or at least many, many people are surprised by, maybe not a surprise that Mr. Trump won the presidential candidacy, but perhaps the, the, the numbers that he uh, won with. I think, I think it's fair to say most everybody was, is surprised at that. And um, so we're still digesting. And one of the things that happens is people say, oh my god, the world's going to end. And so last night, they were interviewing a, a gentleman from a California econo economics forecast and said, oh my god, the Dow's down 500, or whatever it was, is down 500 points, and the economy's going to implode. Today, I haven't checked lately, but as of this morning, it bounced back, a lot of it had bounced back, not entirely. But so we should be very circumscribed about saying that the, the world is going to end one way or the other. I think it's reasonable to assume that things are going to change. And I think probably, may, again, maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't know. We've never been here before. So this is, this is just speculation. But it seems for the kind of things that we worry about, engaging with first generation students, engaging with disenfranchised folks, both in our research and, and trying to bring more people into a college education, I think it's pretty clear that's going to be a lot harder in the next four years. Um, unfortunately, the folks that, in, in my personal opinion, this is my personal opinion now, not, not the schools or anybody, um, the individuals that are in charge of approving the budget aren't strong advocates for the types of scholarship that you guys like to do. They are some people believers that um, climate change is not real, or climate change is not caused by humans at least. That all this work on environmental monitoring is ridiculous. It's very clear that the coal, that, I mean, you can talk about a couple things which uh, in the, our current administration was passed because of the same phenomenon we're talking about. Team A doesn't like Team B, and they stick their middle fingers up at each other and say, screw you. So as a consequence, some of the recent issues that affect us, those of you studying pollution streams and this and that, were passed by um, presidential fiat, right? By presidential decree. Those are all gone. Coal power, uh, controlling coal emissions, done. That'll be deleted you know, within the first week, probably. To be clear, this is both sides. The individual that we just elected to the Senate as our new senator, I think, is similarly messed up. This person, when this person was running for Secretary of State, was on a local call-in show in LA and uh, taking questions. And the person asked this person about holistic, responsible environmental regulation and was particularly talking about things like habitat fragmentation, this and that, endangered species person knew nothing about it. The person immediately ran to a talk about, oh, we have to stop pollution, and polluters are bad, and polluters are blah, blah, blah. Completely didn't understand the lay of the land with regards to um, the true threats and the, the true <coughs> issues with folks working on landscapes. So this is not a, this is not a one side or the other. This, this, both sides seem to be really content to talk about the talking points as opposed to listening to other folks. And so that's, that's a concern. I would say. So I think it's going to be a lot harder to do, to answer Andy's question, it's going to be a lot harder to get things done. I think a lot of the regulations that we are familiar with um, will be, uh, and the entities will be defunded. That, that's been the typical program in the last, it, it, with similar administrations. And this one appears to be that on steroids, and then on crack, and then on meth. Um, <laughs> And so the approach a lot of times is because of legal issues, they can't delete the Department of the Interior, right, or whatever it is. 
but they can sure defund it. They can sure defund it. And so instead of having 1,000 inspectors, they could sure drop down to 100 inspectors. And that, quite honestly, has been one of the formulas for folks that like gridlock and that, such as I, I would argue Mr. Trump has benefited from gridlock. And so what happens is if nothing gets done, everybody is PO'd, right? The people that want the endangered species protected and the folks that want to um, do something different. I mean, if we take that example, if we take that example, just last week, individuals that took over a national wildlife refuge with guns were acquitted. I personally think that if those folks were black or brown, I don't think they would have been allowed to hang out there with guns for a month, streaming live on YouTube. I don't think that maybe would have happened. Certainly, they would not have gotten off scot-free. Their father has been occupying and not paying federal grazing fees for 20 years in their operations in Nevada. They destroyed Native American uh, uh, sites, shot them up. The vegetation is completely nuked. They've not been prosecuted yet. I wonder how that's going to be. How that's going to go? I think those are the type of things that you'll see most quickly. Having said that, having said that, I know colleagues around the country in places that maybe have different views than maybe you guys have the, have have similar frustrations when folks blast in from afar. And you, you, whatever the hell, you're not from here. You don't know how we raise our cattle. You don't know how we fish our fish. And you're going to tell me what to do? You don't come down and sit down and ask me what I think, right? We talked about this in terms of fisheries. You don't ask me what I think. You think you come from some university. You think you got some cool new slick laptop. And you're going to tell me what to do? You don't know crap, man. And so I'm, I'm very sensitive to that feeling, too. So again, it's on both sides. It's on both sides. But but I think we've just seen the pendulum swing. I think the pendulum just broke. <laughs> I think it swung really far, and then it broke off, and it went into hyperspace. I think. I'd kind of just be curious about the types of opportunities that we have in the future with this kind of background. Where where do we go from here with this type of uh, leadership? The thing that I'm is that at least the man has morals. I don't think the woman had any morals for humans at sure. all. Sure. Right. And I can imagine that with you know his like I don't think things be like you know like as far as environment goes, I don't think it's gonna be just like let's start a war against the environment even more. Like as far as I know, like one of the most damaging things for the environment is war. And mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. Sure. You know, if he wants to pull out, like bring all the troops home, that would be awesome because he's a nationalist. He's not a globalist. The last, like, we'll say, 16 years, the president has been conquering other nations for their resource resources to take them into their power and just like leaving destruction. So it, I, I think I think it's unclear how things will will play out with regards to that, but. But sure, if, if this effort acts to ameliorate tensions and to de-conflict things, that would, be, that would be indeed beneficial to the environment and people. Um, I'm not sure that will necessarily happen, but we don't know yet, right? So possibly. Somebody else want to say something? Yeah. Um, I understand we're in an environmental science class, so that's coming up a lot, but there's a lot of other things. That that's right. Not being talked about, like the fact that there are a lot of minorities that are afraid to leave the house today, which is a really big deal for me. Right, right. And there are people who are considering not wearing their hijab anymore because their lives are threatened. And there are a lot of women who feel their lives are threatened, including myself. Um, not because Donald Trump's going to show up in my house and murder me, but because there's a majority of people that agree with a lot of really violent, hateful things. So that's pretty much all I'm thinking about right now. And a lot of the girls are probably like, too sad to even talk, so I figured I should just say something. Well, yeah. um, so, from Donald Trump being in this 
collection has increased so much hate. There's so much hate for us happening now, and it's increased because of him, because of the things he says and everything. And I've had, from the election, I'm not really, and I've had friends that are crying to me on the court because they're scared shitless for this and everything. And I kind of, you know, just to everyone. And then the fact that, you know, he's saying, like, grab, like, grab people's pussies and stuff like that. It's not okay, and he's making that okay, and that's not something that should be happening in this world, and that's, like, yeah, Hillary Clinton's, like, not amazing, and she's not a perfect person either, but, like, Trump is just instilling all this hatred in the world, and it's terrifying, absolutely terrifying. So I don't think the guy's moral. Um, I would just have to say that I, I have a few roommates and, you know, friends and people that I know that have interest in, in Trump based upon, for you know, for everybody's right to have reason and right to have opinions, you know, of like it, maybe his idea of tax, the way he thinks of taxes, the way he thinks of health care. And, you know, that's, that's okay. That's fine. But I will say that um, I would disagree that to... I would look into <laughs> Trump's history of the way in which he views people because, you know, everybody has their vices. Like Hillary's, Hillary's done some things that have made people have very little trust in her and question her, but um, you kind of have to think about, like, at least from a personal opinion, like, what, what do you want America to look like? What do you want America to be represented as? What do you want America to, to give off to the rest of the world? And I think that that's a very fine line for, like I have a little brother who's gay and um, he's personally very nervous and I like get emotional about it just because I feel so bad for him. Um, oh my God, I can't believe I'm crying because <laughs> about it, but I just feel bad, you know? And it's not really about like, you know, having somebody come to your front door and threaten you. It's more like, this is the way that you're what you're presenting to the rest of the world. And it's um, just a little offensive to think that that's okay, you know? It's okay to, to put people down for who they are or what they look like, because it's not at all. So that's personally where I get a little sensitive about it. I could care less about the policies one way or another, not care less, but you know what I mean? Like you're t entitled to your own opinion with your with your policies and the things you believe in and stuff. And I think that is a very, very, very um, important thing to look at when you're looking at somebody who's gonna run a country. So, I don't know. It's yeah. just. Yeah, I think, I think, um, I think one thing that, that has grown up, and thanks for sharing that, you guys. One thing I think that's come up in this, our current generation of, um, with internet and with all these wonderful tools that we've been blessed with, I think there's some idea of well, we should be able to do whatever the hell we want, right? Yeah. And it, it's freedom of speech and freedom of this and that. And, and, th and freedom of speech is a tough thing. It really yeah. is a tough thing. And it should be a tough thing. You need to be worried when people start telling you how you should talk and how you should speak. Having said that, having said that, words matter. And how we say things matters. And it's, I, I have great nervousness personally, not set aside from this whole, <laughs> this whole election thing, about some of the speech constraints that are coming down for us at universities. Now I'm a tenured professor, right? I'm an old yeah. fat dude. I can say whatever I want, <laughs> kind of, right? One of the goals of me being here and you being in your seat is for me to make you grow, for me to help you learn and become a better person. And sometimes that means I say things that might challenge what you think, right? And so there is a place for someone like me in a context like this saying something that might be controversial yeah. or something that might make us talk and think and, and, and consider something different. But that's one way to speak in the professor in front of a class. There are, I wouldn't necessarily speak the same way, I don't necessarily speak the same way, when I go to buy my sandwich at the sandwich shop, right? Yeah. 
and that's for a variety of reasons. I, I, you guys know me. I'm loud and obnoxious. So I'm not. I'm not. I'm never quiet. I'm not. I'm not but, 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 um, it's. I. I thought that I don't want to say whatever I want to say on top of my my head. But I'm. I'd like these people to know that I respect them too, right? And that let's have these conversations. And I want to say stuff in a way that's going to not turn people off, and we can have a conversation about stuff. I think one thing, and we've seen it most clear, I mean, one of the places is Ventura County Star, our local newspaper. Um, it is insane, the stuff that people will post about uh, me or anybody on that forum. They, they've, they've changed the rules. But in theory, this was a great place, right? This, this was, here's some information, here's a story about something, and then someone make a comment, and somebody else can make a comment. Oh my God, you wouldn't believe some of the ugly, uh, on things that had nothing to do with whatever. Yeah. And, and it, from what I saw, it was all from one particular political viewpoint, but there are definitely other uh, fora that people from the opposite side say stuff, but that's, that's the issue, right? The issue isn't that you should, you should be able to say what you want to say, but, but um, is the goal saying what you want to say, or is the goal to have power over someone? I think absolutely Mr. Trump says stuff to piss people off, and intentionally so. But I think also on the other side, you've heard similar things, right? Snickering, <laughs> guys are all racist, <laughs> right? Which is similarly not fair. I think there are, there are tools on that side, and there are tools on that side. There's jerks on both. And it, again, it's too easy, and I, I totally hear what you guys are saying about, about worry and this and that. The challenge is to go forward, because this is the world we're in. There's, there's no rewind button or anything like that, right? The challenge is where do we go from here, right? And from here, um, I think the only way possibly forward is for us to have conversations with folks, right? Mm -hmm. And I think to do exactly what you guys just did. Tell people, honestly, you know, these words are hurtful, right? These are hurtful to me. These are hurtful to my family, my friends. I, I, I tell you what, most people, when you tell them that, won't go, <laughs> most people go, well, I didn't mean that, or, or, or whatever, right? And that's where the dialogue starts. If we don't share this stuff, if we don't talk to each other as, as people, that's where the problem is. When we're all caricatures of someone else, that's the problem. And, and uh, unfortunately, the, the, current, the current political structure is such that it's very easy to talk about people in caricatures. Indeed, a lot of this debate was featured Twitter, right? 148 characters, right? We can't have a true dialogue. We can't have an engaging discussion. I can't see if you're snickering or you're actually really serious, right? And so, not that Twitter is evil or anything, but, but we need to do more of this getting together with folks and having beers with folks and having cookies with folks and having coffee with folks. And I, I, I really, just really, really think that. And again, I think most folks don't want you guys to feel disempowered. Some do, but to be totally clear, some do. <laughs> but not everyone, do you know what I'm saying? And I think, I think uh, it's important to have that dialogue. And I, I think, it, as I mean, it's true. They're, they're the one of the gentlemen that's Mr. Trump's delegate to the California Electoral College is a white supremacist, and a proud, proudly so. And, and David Dugan. So there is this absolute element, at least, at least, racism adjacent, at least racism okay with to be in the room with, right? I don't think everybody that voted for Mr. Trump is racist or anything like that. But there's a window for that. There's a window for that that's open. And that's concerning. To not talk to each other, to say you're a tool or you're an a-hole or you're a this or that, that is a formula for that to fester. That is absolutely a formula for those folks to take empowerment in this and that. It's important to say also now, this isn't just us. This isn't just California. This isn't just U.S. Most high profile recently, uh, the, uh, Great Britain, right? Voted to leave the European Union. Very similar things. Very similar things. 
there was this vote is coming up. Hey, we want to have a let's have a participatory government. Da 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 da. Let's vote. Polls said one thing. Da 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 da. And then what happened? They voted to leave the leave the um, the European Union. And at at heart, part of at least what seems to be going on, both with our current U.S. Gov U.S. Uh, situation and in the U.K is this issue of people feeling slighted, people feeling left behind, right? I can't tell you, so one of my undergraduate degrees was in environmental studies, and we're doing some stuff, and we're having a discussion when I was a senior in a, in a, in a policy class, and we were talking about, I forget what, I think it was a dangerous speech, it was, it was some law, and it was all this stuff, and uh, there, was some, there was some new iteration of the law that had just come out, or was in the process of coming out, and we were talking about that. I think it might have been NEPA. I think it might have been some NEPA stuff. And so um, I said, that sounds totally, I said a bad word, effed up. I said, that's totally effed up. And the guy next to me said, that's not bad. I said, yeah, it is. It's way more complex. To do the same thing, it's way more complicated. It's more steps. It's that. He said, dude, that's job, that's job security for us. What are you talking about? Meaning that we were trained in that. And we could easily get a job. So what this guy was saying was, hey, it's good for me that this crazy additional regulation stuff is going on that doesn't necessarily seem to maybe be getting a better result. And my response was, that's totally effed up. Because you might, yeah, that might give you a job for a few years, but that's going to continue to piss people off. That's going to continue to make people think, some people, that this regulation is unfair, that this regulation is benefiting a certain group and not everyone. And, and I lost the debate. Most of my colleagues thought it was a good thing. <laughs> anyway, but, but right? And we have to look in the mirror, too, about this stuff. Uh, just going on Facebook, I see a lot of people posting, you support Trump, unfriend me now, I don't want to see you on my news feed and stuff. And yeah. I was reading that, and I was just like, wow. Like, I kind of agree, but then on the other hand, that's not really you know, the best way to be sharing ideas, like you said, and you just kind of confirm that even. I'm scrolling through, and I see people who, a few people, on my Facebook who wanted Trump and they're like, God bless America, yeah. Like some of my friends in the military are like, oh, our new commander in chief. And I'm just like, I don't want to even see this. Like I can't even like, you're here and I'm here and it's just, we're just so far apart. Um, and so, but then you just you have to remember, like you really just have to be positive and think that, you know, maybe something cool could come from this or maybe something good or give us an opportunity to talk about things and even like, when I'm on base and I'm working, and I work with people in the military, and they're more conservative, I would say, on average, and they ask me because they know I'm an environmental student, and they say, well, "How do you? What are you voting? Who do you vote for? Why are you voting for them?" And that, and I take that as the opportunity to tell all them climate change is real, and this and that, and give them like specific facts and give them places they can go and find more information. And I don't agree with anything that they have to say. But I, they don't have to know that, and they don't have to agree with me, but I put that bug in their ear, though, and they have that in their ear, and they'll, they'll, they'll hear that ear, they'll, they'll hear that bug in their ear maybe when they're voting next time or, you know, when they're learning about other topics, and I just, I don't know, I just... And you can learn from each other, too, you know, there's mm -hmm. lots you can learn, it's always something you can mm -hmm. learn, mm -hmm. yeah, it's important. Yeah, I mean, I, I, this one, oh, you sorry. present your opinions and information to you know it's one thing to say you know this is the these are the following things I think and present it you know in a kind mannerism um, <coughs> versus to just kind of like slander on about how you're gonna you know unfriend everybody and I mean you're creating the division that you don't like to see yeah that's just we gotta remember though that that's just Facebook and that's that's the five loudest people you know versus the hundred mm -hmm. of people that aren't posting today because they're reserved and they have, you know, they know that yelling about it, it's already done, it's mm -hmm. pissing everybody out, but it's, 
they're, it's easy to get that perspective when you're on Facebook. It's just, it's just a few people. Like not everybody's doing that, and a lot of the people that aren't doing that are probably in the classroom today talking about it like we are, or in some kind of, you know, open dialogue. Hopefully. Um, I would say, <coughs> I think I'm more upset at the nation as a whole supporting someone who has the same morals and opinions as Trump than I am at Trump being the president in a way. That we as a nation are backing not a gentleman but a guy who has just has those views. You know, I have so many friends abroad. I've talked to almost every one of them in the past day. And I felt embarrassed and kind of ashamed because each one of them had derogatory talk to me saying, Why would you ever support that? I'm like, I'm a California man, but like every single one, all my Facebook feed is more actually of people, my friends from abroad saying like, you know, America is this, that, about America, like how can they support someone like this? Even we see it and we're not even in America. So I'm more upset that the nation is backing someone with his values. And I'm not saying Hillary should have won for being a woman, but there's so much women vote that back him for what he said on YouTube, you can show him a YouTube video and I bet you he'd still deny that he derogatory talks. How can someone become an elected official who just does that? Uh, I think I the harder part with that is that like, he never really proposed much much yeah. of what he plans on doing. He just kind of said, he, he, really. yeah, he's got like some one line really, 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 really <laughs> yeah. going. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna make coal a thing, it's gonna be great again. I'm gonna, to make America great, I'm going to put jobs in the energy industry by making coal okay. But then you never write the detail on how he's going to do stuff. And so it kind of feels like people are blindly voting. They're like, well, he said he's going to do this without any evidence. I want him to do it. So let's put him up there and see what he can do. And it's like, that's not the way to think about things. You've got you to gotta see what does he plan on doing? How does he plan on doing it? How is it going to happen? What gears need to move to get to that point? Because Everyone just sees the end point, but no one sees like the whole journey. But I think the other phenomenon here, to be clear, is that the entire federal um, uh, executive uh, legislative is, is in um, a particular uh, party's control now. Um, and they have, uh, if not Mr. Trump, at least many of his colleagues have said pretty clearly what policies they want to do. And so you're right, what, what, we have to see what ends up coming out, but um, uh, I think it's, it's pretty clear that some things will be changing. I, th I think that's fair to say. Yeah, like you said, he's not a, a dictator. He has a lot of power, especially with the executive um, branches, EPA, things like that. Mm -hmm. But they can't just just change everything. Congress is gonna fight him. A lot of things that people talk about is gonna get fought. Mm -hmm. And as far as people being terrified, all our hate crimes are still in place. Those aren't gone. You can't go around and just yeah. do anything like that and, Know, go gay bashing or beat someone because they're wearing a hijab, you're going to go to jail still. That's still there. Those aren't going to change. I mean, maybe you can appoint a new person to the Supreme Court, but like I say, are they really going to just appeal the hate crime laws and things like that? Those are going to stay. And hopefully we've seen enough environmental disasters that they're not going to just completely change things. And some of the funding will be going away, but are they just going to take away all these rules and let trains go down you know, the middle of the country and blowing up filled with oil? That's not going to happen. The communities aren't going to allow that to happen. I want to believe they're not going to allow that to happen. That's so, right. So, so I think that's tr tr true. But just to be clear, there's been such gridlock for the last eight years. Much of the policy, federal policy that's come down, has come down as fiat. It's not come down as new law. It's come down as this is new policy. We're going to treat it as if it's new law. And, and it, in effect, might, might act like it's new law. But it's, you know, for example, uh, let's take something that's, that's not environmental, so maybe people aren't as, as sensitive to it, but the first thing President Obama pledged when he got into office, first thing he wanted to do is close Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> Never happened, mm -hmm. right? Never happened. He's tried to squeeze it, but he was not able to get that, that action accomplished. And that was his number one thing that he said, first thing I'm going to do. So that, that I think, is... Um, indicative of, the, of, again, this divided country that we're in, um, where, and, and as we've seen in coastal marine management, there is no way for me to get everything I want. It, just, it is just not possible. 
When people tell you that, they are straight up lying to you or they're in a delusional state. We can't have this many millions of people concentrated into these areas where we live and everybody get exactly what they want. Indeed, the more people we have, the more the need for compromise. The, and, and, and compromise is not a dirty word, right? In the vast, 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 vast majority of cases. But yet, you, I think that's what's been preached. Some people are telling you that if this happens, then, oh my God, that stuff's gonna end. The other side says exactly the opposite. If this happens, that's gonna end. That's not the way to govern. That's not the way adults behave. The answer is, let me hear your concerns. Here are my concerns. Let's work out something that um, gets what I need and what you need. And that's what's been missing. That's what's been missing. And part of this issue of <laughs> unable to acknowledge true facts, there are such things as facts, that's part of this, right? Because folks weren't able to compromise, they just started yelling more and more and more and more, and they basically invented their own views of the world. And that's not, that's not, ultimately that's not good, right? It used to be, if we take, if we take Washington, D.C., it used to be these guys would go, and then my kids would go play with Shannon's kids. And, you know, she was one party, I'm another party, and they'd go do 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 play, go to school together. That doesn't happen anymore. It used to be softball leagues. Same thing, it's, same thing up in Sacramento. We used to have softball leagues where the, where the legislatures, well, I don't know, Friday afternoons or whatever the heck it is, would go and they'd play softball together. All done. All done. They can't even play a game that five-year-olds can play together, right? And we are voting for these people. We are supporting that type of activity. And, and to be sure, there were problems with that. There were problems with, hey, we're sitting there, and then, hey, you know, you want, let me do this, and backroom dealing and stuff that we, we tend to not like. But that's how fo folks had relationships, right? President Ronald Reagan used to go sit with, with Speaker of the House Tip O'Neill, and they'd drink together, right? And you might say, oh, man, those are power, you know, cabal coming together. Not really. I mean, I wasn't there, so I don't know, but... But I don't believe that's what was going on. It was rather adults talking, right? And, and I think we need, to, we need to get back to that. The other thing to say is that, for better or worse, this is your country, right? So I think some people now are saying, I don't recognize this, this isn't my country. This is our country. So a quick story there. First time I go to Turkey, a research project in Eastern Turkey, along the border, and we're doing stuff, and, and there's this one part of the Turkish border which looks like a finger, and there's, there's, the, the finger is Turkey, and on one side is Iran, now there's Azerbaijan, the other side is Armenia, and this peninsula is about seven miles long, it's narrow, it's really bizarre. It was created by politicians. <laughs> Nobody would ever make a border like this. And we were looking for, among other things, I was looking for wetlands, my colleagues were looking for storks. So we're out there. So these are storks, these are birds that are nesting on these trees and towers, and so they have spotting scopes. My colleague, my bird thing colleagues have, we're in like a little falling apart VW van. So we drive and stop, get out of the car, everybody jumps up, everybody puts up their binoculars and looks, except for me, I'm looking at the, the plants. And then we look for a few minutes, get in the car, drive a quarter mile, get out, look. So we're doing that, and after about 20 minutes, up cup come the gendarme, which you, we would call like the sheriff. Okay, and they, woo, the headlights, headlights, woo, pull us over. What are you doing? Arrest us. Not, well, technically not arrest us, detain us. So everybody has to get back in the van. You've got to follow us to this army base. Like, what's going on? Just do it. What's going on? Just do it. <laughs> Go to an army base. Get to the army base. Then they want everybody's IDs. Everybody is Turk, is, is a Turk, except for me, the weirdo, right? Pull out my American passport. And what? Rank, rank, rank. American, American. And what? Then another whole silliness ensues. What the hell is an American doing on the border taking pictures of our? So, long story short, they say, okay, gonna take all your guys' cameras. Like, whoa, whoa, what? what? Yep, gonna come confiscate all your cameras, computers, all your recording devices. Like, wait, wait, what? What are you doing? They ask. Taking pictures of birds. 
You think we're stupid, they said? <laughs> Nobody takes pictures of birds. What do you think, what, you think we were born yesterday? Like, no, 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 we're taking pictures of birds. No, you were taking pictures of the security installation. Uh, so so everybody, everybody's got guns in that part of the world. Everybody loves to hate their neighbor in that part of the world. And so they said what was happening was, and so, so that the border is more, there's terrorists and things going on there. So the border is manned by special force, Turkish special forces in their Turkish border guard towers. They said they saw us getting out and taking photos of them. So they said they were getting ready to shoot us with these snipers, right? So the gendarmes hear this, and so they go and grab us so that we don't get shot. But then the deal was they had to take us to this military base, right, to figure out what's going on. So it takes a long time. Finally, this lieutenant colonel comes by, and uh, uh, my friend shows him the birds, and the guy goes, oh, yeah, this is a thing. People take pictures of birds. All the other soldiers are like, what, really? Taking pictures of birds? That's a thing? Wow. <laughs> and so then, basically, they, long story short, let us go and didn't take our cameras, right? Wow. Those people, them, the other, those ignorance, those other people, pff, this country's so bizarre. Would never happen in my country, is what I was thinking, right? We're so much superior to those folks. About... Three weeks later, I have my Louisiana trip. I hope you guys can help me to Louisiana this year. <laughs> Louisiana trip, we're down. This is, this is pretty soon after, her, this is one of the early trips, soon after Hurricane Katrina, it's like 2000, I don't know, six or seven. We go down to the, the Bird's Foot Delta, the end of the road, the southernmost point you can go to um, in Louisiana. And there's a port there. And at the time, it was still utterly destroyed. And so we're out, we're taking pictures, we're doing all this stuff, and there's a sign. There is a tourist sign, and if you guys ever look at any of our pictures from New Orleans, you'll see every year we take, a, or usually every year we take a class picture in front of it, and it says, it's a map, it says, welcome to Venice, Louisiana, the southernmost point in Louisiana. It's not the southernmost point, but the southernmost point you can drive to. You know, da-da-da-da, okay, great. You know, do take a picture, look around. Students always stand on these pilings and take pictures for a second. And then we do it after we've been, at the time we were working on fixing houses, now we work on um, uh, food gardens down there. But we we're, but were doing stuff, and this is sort of the last bit of the day. Went and checked it out, turned around, come back. All of a sudden, huge line of cars come buzzing up. Like a bunch of these Ford, I don't know what the hell they were, Ford Fiestas or something. Like, <laughs> dust coming up, the gravel road, like, well, it goes really fast. Like, what's going on? Everybody's like, woo, woo. And they're standing, they're standing around. <laughs> Door opens up, and literally jackbooted thugs get out. Guys that have. Guys that have uh, uh, rubber boots, bombardier jackets, uh, helmet, uh, 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 sort of like hard hats on, surround us. You're being detained. Uh, wait, what? You're being detained under the P U.S. Patriot Act. Wait, what? We're on a public, we're on a freeway in the United States of America in a <laughs> wetland. Like, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to confiscate. What? all of your cameras and recording devices. Wait, what? And then of course I have you guys with me and then you guys start to say, this is America, man, you can't do that. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. And then some, and then it's, you know, like words and stuff and bad language and stuff. And, um, and so this is going on. And finally, everybody calmed down. Like, hey, you guys just go over there. Ha ha ha, take care of it. Ha ha. <laughs> hey, dude, you're pretty cool. Ha ha. What are you doing again? And long story short, they are from a nearby petrochemical refinery, which under the Patriot Act was declared a secured installation. And those folks were given authority to arrest and, det and or detain US, anybody, anybody they want. So then they said, then we expl you know, explain what's going on. Here's my business card. Ha, 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 ha. Don't talk to the students. Talk to me. Look at me. Ha, ha. My eyes are over here. And so we talk, <laughs> talk to them. Finally get them calmed down. Finally get them calmed down. And they said, OK, well, we won't take your, your, your cameras. We just have to delete all your memory cards. And I'm thinking, oh my god, these are all the photos from the last you know, week and stuff. I'm like, don't delete that. And, and so the compromise was, you have to delete any, anything that has water in it. 
really? There's like every single picture has water. Like, what are you talking about? And they won't tell me why. They just say, you got to do it. And I kept saying, can you give me some more? Nope. Don't have to give you any explanation. Right? And so, uh, long story short, we deleted a few pictures. And then um, <laughs> we, had, we, had, we had some conversations. Turns out uh, they saw us coming out and taking pictures. Even though I explained, we were in front of the tourism sign, and we were clearly a bunch of Californians, right? We didn't say y'all, we said dude, right? And finally everybody's calmed down and all this and that. So then finally, as everybody's you know, walking away from each other, I was talking to this guy, and this guy said, hey, you know, thank you very much for coming down and doing all this work to help us recover from Hurricane Katrina. Really appreciate it. He goes, you know, we totally get it with you guys. You were here in town doing rebuilding, helping us with all this, this stuff, and, and that was cool. Um, and, we, and you guys wanted to come down and see the water? We totally get it. We totally get it. But you know what really disturbs me? You know what? Last week, these guys came down. And there were two guys. And they were, um, they were Middle Eastern looking. And I said, oh. And what happened? And he says, he says, oh, so we came and we detained them. They were taking pictures too. And I said, oh, what were they, what were they taking pictures of? And he said, they said, nature. And he, and he raised his eyebrows, nature. Can you believe that? And I'm thinking, they're surrounded by swirl oh, here, dude. Right. And so, ha, 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 those guys, nature. We're going to leave now, right? <laughs> Same thing, same thing. Turkish army base, Louisiana <coughs> freeway, same thing, right? We should always expect the highest of us, and we should always behave the best. But we should be careful about saying that we are so much better than the other guy, right? We never, that never happened. And, and the last thing I'll just say is one thing, if you guys are feeling bad, if you guys are feeling like you don't know, um, you don't know what to do, this is this last weekend at the, at the Science Carnival. These are important things. Watch what happens. Oh, that's an oil spot. No. And does the water ever stop moving around? No. No. So what happens to that oil? It goes on the sea. Thousands of kids were there at Thurgood Marshall Elementary School in Oxnard. And there's just a little fluorescein dye demo we're doing, right? The Emily was there doing that, right? If you're feeling tweaked out one way or the other by this election, right? Don't go, now I guess you can smoke out all day, I guess you want to. Don't go, don't go smoke out. Don't go get inebriated, right? Go out and help somebody. Go out and talk to some kids, right? The best anecdote, if you feel, ah, I don't know what to do, right? Help somebody else that's having a bad day, right? Somebody's broken down the side of the road, hey, can I call you? Uh, a cab or can I help you with your tire, right? Don't become cynical. The stakes are too high. You must stay engaged. I am not gonna let you, you are not allowed to go crawl away somewhere. We must engage and we must get better. Anytime we have challenges, it's understandable that we might wanna pull away or or give up or take, hit the pause button. And hitting the pause button is, is not, a, not a bad thing on, on both sides for a little bit here, right? Take a breather. But one of the reasons we're in this position that we're in, that the right side hates the left, the left side hates the right, is because people took a pause for too long. Okay? Uh, take a breath, understand, but do use this as an opportunity to, re to think how can I go do a science carnival, right? There were like 3,000 kids there. The booth my son's scout troop was working at, they were doing, uh, they did something like, I forget, like a thousand, thousand showing kids how to do fingerprint and, and DNA swabs, so if something were to happen to them, God forbid, right? They could, they'd have something, right? That's a, that's a ton of people that were jazzed. Those kids don't know 
who the hell Donald Trump is or who the hell Hillary Clinton is, right? They're like, wow, that's cool. That glowing thing in the water right there, that's supposed to mimic oil, is glowing, right? That's what they know. So, so go talk to those guys and go work with those kids and, and everybody else. And you, can, and you should you know, give each other a hug and everything too, right? The world's <laughs> not going to end. The world's not going to end. So, okay, good. Is, anybody, is there anything else? Any other concluding marks you guys wanted to say or anything that was on the top of your head or any other questions you guys had? have something on a, a little bit of lighter side of the floor election. Last night they were panning through the Clinton headquarters and when they're tallying up some of the votes, it was so quiet there you can hear emails being deleted. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like it. I like it. That's good. I like it. That's a good way to end it.